Now, for the global elites, mass illegal migration is about two things. First, they want to flood developed countries with unsustainable levels of migrants to even out the top GOP earning countries in the world. You know, our standards have to go down and the exceptional have to become, I don't know, kind of mm, meh, not exceptional. Second, and as I, allude, as I alluded before the break, there is a crap load of money involved, especially if you're a corrupt FBI head or defense secretary in Mexico. How many more similar government officials are there in other countries? Surely not here. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, the money trail goes all the way to the top of the global elite society. Did you know that January is World Economic Forum Month? I'm still celebrating at home. I light a candle every night. And then they have some of the biggest drivers for mass migration all over the world hemorrhaging from that organization. Back in June and the lead up to their current annual forum, the WEF said it was, quote, time to rethink migration. Who hasn't been saying that? But it wasn't, hey, let's rethink it because it might be destroying countries. Instead, it was, how can we double down on this really exceptionally bad idea? The globalists decided they needed to reframe the narrative. I love that. And in doing so, they concentrated on economics and demographics. All a ruse just to enlist private businesses to partner with governments all over the world. Public-private partnership equals fascism. In another WEF article this month, they state that the IOM, that's the International Office of Migration from the UN, they said, this cannot and should not do it alone. They cannot do it alone. Yeah. So we have the globalists at WEF pushing the mass movement populations all over the world, and they're enlisting private businesses to help them, and then they're working in parallel with the United Nations. Oh, boy. Come on, who else is involved? Tell me, tell me. Well, muckraker.com recently obtained actual maps that Doctors Without Borders supplies to their illegal migrants in South America. I may have misunderstood what kind of borders those doctors were talking about, but let's take a look at this map, because it shows rally and meetup points all the way down in Panama. Yeah, look at the different points going up through Costa Rica here in this great... It shows where illegals can find hotels and food the entire route. Now, doctor, who's paying for this stuff? Is Doctors Without Borders really? And if they are, who's giving them the money? I think they should spend it on bandages and eye things. Now, per their website, some of their corporate donors, you're never going to believe it, Google, Microsoft, Bill Gates, and Bloomberg. Now, are they knowingly funding this? I mean, we don't know. But is this what the WEF call to private business brought them? Now, going back to their detailed map, the tailed routes are charted here, where you go, okay, directly right in to Mexico, okay? Now, Mexico is not the final destination. I know, surprise. Their next map shows detailed routes all the way through Mexico, right here through the border, okay? Now, their next map shows, you know, the routes through America to Canada. No, there is no other map. It ends with America. Now, I'm curious, does Doctors Without Borders know that they're contributing to human trafficking? Do they know that the cartels are making $2,000 a head for each illegal migrant? Do these doctors without any borders know this? Can they even really call themselves doctors if they're leading to so much destruction, death, and rape? I don't know. Do they know that terrorists could be using these routes with all of this infrastructure to infiltrate our country? You know, I, I, I really, I don't think they care. Doctors Without Borders has a strange relationship, shall we say, with terrorist groups. A statement they released on humanitarian negotiations revealed they, quote, paid an Al-Qaeda-affiliated militia $10,000 per project registration fee to continue working in Somalia. Oh, so they fund terrorism. Are we really to believe that nifty little maps aren't enabling terrorists? 
Muckraker also obtained this map. This one's from the UN's International Organization of Migration. Each one of these cute little dots here represents consulates and commissions that migrants can navigate, you know, in between their way up to the United States. Now, from the IOM UN website, they believe that it is now time to harness the powers of migration. Now, I thought this was all about helping the oppressed people in the world. This kind of sounds like a different kind of motive, doesn't it? Check this out. It is clear that the sustainable development goals cannot be reached without safe, orderly, and regular migration. Regular migration, well, everybody's coming up here. Maybe we can go to a special camp, you know, ourselves. Do they, are they preparing a surprise for us? So this is really about Agenda 2030, which, remember, is a complete conspiracy theory, except it's on all the websites, uh, and uh, the Great Reset, which, again, is another conspiracy theory, except you can find it on the WEF website. Now, who funds this transformation of American life, culture, society, through the UN? Well, you're going to be hap -hap happy to know you do. The United States of America, nobody gives more money to the UN than us. Here's a map from Muckraker that was distributed by the Red Cross. Oh my gosh, I thought they only did nursing stuff. No, no, they'll help collapse our country too. They want a piece of this. Now, it shows freight train routes where illegals can hop aboard and ride all the way, doot, doot, to the U.S. Well, actually, not to the U.S. The train stops. Everybody off, because the cartels are there waiting for them to pay their $2,000 to cross. Isn't it great? And who are the biggest funders of the Red Cross? Yeah, you're going to love this. Ooh, American Airlines, Walmart, Walgreens, donors committing and or raising a million dollars or more. The Coca-Cola Company, Fox, Target, and on and on and on. But what happens after the illegals arrive at the border? Well, after they pay off their cartels and then they cross the border, the answer is both shocking and infuriating. Under Joe Biden, the Border Patrol processes, remember the little green things? They process all the illegals and then mostly release them to other NGOs. And at this point, poof, David Copperfield. I can't find them. The Heritage Foundation recently tracked cell phone activities of migrants crossing the border, going to some of these private NGOs. These cell phones revealed here activity at all major immigration NGOs in border states from all across the southern border. The migrants are then placed on buses and then spread all over the country. Let me show you this map. It's exciting. It shows the routes that the illegals are taking, including their destinations. Now, this sure don't look like an invasion to me. The Valverde Border Humanitarian Coalition is one of the main NGOs. They're moving illegals into the country. Everybody says, oh, Greg Abbott in Texas got to stop sending people. They're not the ones. These NGOs are. This is a normal day at this NGO in Texas. Crowds of illegals waiting on their buses just to be shipped somewhere in the United States. Here's another day. And we could do this all day long. It's never ending. Border numbers are shattering records every month. Where are they going? Poof, don't worry about them. Where are they from? Well, you know, besides South America, these buses host illegals from Africa, uh, China, mm, Russia, and on and on and on. I saw that guy from, uh, well, he was from the Middle East. He's like, you don't know my name. You'll cer certainly will on my name soon. Oh, that sounded great. Really, it does. Before Texas began directing these buses to blue states and cities, it wasn't clear where they were going. The political manu maneuver appears to be working. Democrats in their strongholds, in their sanctuary cities are like, ow, make it stop. Yeah, that's what we've been feeling on the border for a long time now. Where will all these illegals ultimately end up? Your mood's not going to improve. I recently did a documentary for Blaze TV on the land development that houses thousands of illegals just a few minutes outside of Houston at Colony Ridge. Yeah, it's like a third world comp, uh, country and it's all legal and it's happening all over the United States.